This video illustrates the principles, techniques and results of internal fixation for distal humerus fractures. A sterile tourniquet is recommended to facilitate dissection and allow proximal extension of the exposure. The main landmarks for placement of the skin incision include the tip of the olecranon, the location of the ulnar nerve, and the subcutaneous border of the ulna. The incision is centered distally over the subcutaneous border of the ulna, extends proximally just medial to the tip of the olecranon, and remains centered between the medial and lateral aspects of the arm. Subcutaneous dissection is then carried to the level of the triceps tendon. We routinely transpose the ulnar nerve into an anterior subcutaneous pocket. A self-retaining retractor between the medial aspect of the triceps and the medial subcutaneous flap helps identify and dissect the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve is dissected proximally and protected with a vessel loop tied to itself as opposed to tagged with a metal instrument. This prevents constant traction on the nerve by the weight of the metal instrument. Nerve dissection is then continued distally to allow ample transposition of the ulnar nerve. This requires dissection to the first motor branch. A large pocket is then created subcutaneously and the ulnar nerve is placed in the anterior translocated position for the remainder of the case. Most complex distal humerus fractures are approached through an olecranon osteotomy. The plane between the triceps and distal humerus is identified first and a Hohmann retractor may be used to place the triceps under tension. The medial fracture fragments may be identified and freed to facilitate later reduction and a periosteal elevator may then be used to elevate the triceps of the posterior humeral shaft. The olecranon osteotomy is planned so that it will exit at the so-called burr area of the articular surface of the greater sigmoid notch. We favor a chevron type of theotomy. The ulnar periosteum, part of the flexor carpi ulnaris, and the anconeus are divided with electrocautery to expose the proximal ulna in preparation for the osteotomy. Small Hohmann retractors may be used to pull up on the proximal ulna and avoid damage to the articular cartilage of the distal humerus. The Chevron configuration has been marked with a surgical pen and a microcytal saw is used to complete the two limbs of the osteotomy, shy of the articular surface. An osteotome may then be used to complete the osteotomy. The osteotomized olecranon fragment is then dissected proximally with the triceps and part of the anconeus exposing the distal humerus. The main fracture fragments are identified and cleaned of fracture hematoma. In this particular case, the flexion deformity of the medial column needs to be corrected, as noted in the preoperative CT scan. The extent of proximal fracture extension needs to be appreciated in order to plan the reduction and select the ideal plate length. First step of fracture fixation includes fracture reduction and provisional wire fixation. An anatomic reduction of the articular surface is mandatory whenever possible and may be maintained with the small wires placed close to the subchondral bone, not to interfere with later screw placement. Note rotational maneuvers and compression to achieve an anatomic reduction, maintained with wires from both the medial and lateral side. The procedure should not be continued unless anatomic reduction of the articular surface has been achieved at this point.
Medial and lateral parallel plates are then applied and fixed in place with a stime and pins through the medial and lateral epicondyles. Most precontour plates fit nicely the outline of the distal humerus, but some cases may require a slight intraoperative modification of the plates. Clamps may be used to maintain provisional reduction and secure the plates in the appropriate position. A screw in an oblong hole may be used to preposition the plate, allowing fine tuning it if needed. This screw is not fully tightened. Once the two medial and lateral plates have been provisionally positioned, distal fixation is achieved by insertion of long screws from lateral to medial and medial to lateral across the distal humerus. These screws engage as many fragments as possible are fixed to fragments on the opposite side, also fixed by a plate, and typically measure between 50 and 65 millimeters. The screw may be fully tightened, providing excellent fixation of the plate to the distal fragments. A similar screw is being placed through the plate from medial to lateral, fixing the medial plate to the distal fragments. Again, these distal screws typically measured around 55 or 60 millimeters. The Steinman pins used for provisional fixation of the plates may then be replaced by long screws. Drilling at this point should be avoided if possible to prevent breakage of the drill bits. The pathway created by the Steinman pins may be used for a screw insertion. A final lateral screw is being inserted from lateral to medial to complete the distal fixation of the lateral plate. Once adequate distal fixation of the plates is achieved, supracondylar compression is applied and maintained. The proximal screw used for provisional plate fixation is loosened and a clamp is used to apply maximum compression to one of the columns. Compression is maintained by insertion of one or more screws in the compression mode. The same maneuver is repeated on the opposite column. The proximal screw is provisionally loosened. A clamp is applied to achieve compression. And the compression is maintained by insertion of proximal screws in the compression mode. The remaining proximal holes on each of the two plates are then filled with additional cortical screws. All the principles have been achieved. The articular surface is anatomically reduced. The periarticular parallel plates achieve adequate anchorage in the distal fragments and provide compression at the supracondylar level. And in this particular case, one posterior cortical fragment has been fixed with a separate screw. Adequate range of motion and stability should be intraoperatively confirmed.
The olecanon osteotomy may be fixed with either a plate or tension band wiring. The Chevron configuration of the osteotomy facilitates reduction and provides some inherent stability. A wire placed through the osteotomized fragment maintains reduction and may be used for provisional plate placement. The plate is then provisionally fixed with one or two distal screws through oblong holes. A clamp may be used for additional compression maintained with the screws applied in the compression mode. Plate fixation to the proximal olecanon is best performed using several cancellous screws. The wire used for provisional fixation may then be replaced by a long screw through the anterior ulnar cortex. This screw typically measures between 50 and 70 millimeters. Intraoperative fluoroscopy is used routinely at the end of the case to ensure adequate position of the hardware used for fixation. Small C arms facilitate obtaining anteroposterior and lateral views. Note the anatomic reduction of the articular surface, five long distal screws, and adequate compression at the supracondylar level. The ulnar nerve is maintained in an anterior subcutaneous pocket with a simple suture between the medial skin flap and the epicondyle, and the rest of the closure is routine.